Hello friends, welcome to the DLA program of environmental studies. I am Dr. Romila Soni. Today's topic is teaching learning methods for EVS experiments. Let's see the focus of today's session. And it focuses on unit 6, 6.8. Why do we need experiments in EVS classroom? What do we mean by experiments? Let's see what are the other focus of this session how experiments are appropriate for teaching learning of EVS, kinds of experiments that could be individual, small group and buddy system. And then we are going to discuss some examples of experiments in EVS classroom. Let's see the next. Now we are going to take one point and we are going to discuss in detail. Why do we need experiments in EVS classroom? What is the need? Well, an experiment or the practical work help us to establish a cause and effect relationship. You must be wondering, what is cause and effect relationship? Well, cause is for example, is a cloud and effect is the rain. Similarly, when the child rubs two colors on his or her palms, that is the cause. And when, the rub, when, when it rubs and comes out one color, that is the effect. So it is experiment help us to establish a cause and effect relationship. It helps children to understand the topic much better because it provides hands-on experience. Because hands-on experience is what the children are doing it with their own hands, handle and manipulate material. So that gives them a practical knowledge and they learn better. Let's see in detail what do we mean by experiments. The word experiment from where it came. It comes from the Latin word meaning to try or to put to test. It means every time the children need to be encouraged to try and to put to the test. Why we say because the children learn better? Because it includes inquiry, observation, inferring and testing of a hypothesis. Inquiry because they want to know what is there, why it is happening. Observation includes exploration. Information is based on evidence to reach to some conclusion why it happens, what it happens. So the children need to reason out why it is happening so. And testing of a hypothesis, why it happens, why it will happen and what it is happen and how it is going to happen. So the more the children do the experiment and manipulate material and objects, their understanding will become better and they understand the theory better. Let's see further. What do we mean by experiments? Well, it is not difficult to devise experiments that can generally be fitted within the time allocated to teach a particular topic. It is easy. Only the teacher need to be creative and need to explore the nature and the environment which is full of material. What do we mean by practical experiments? Practical experiments mean tasks or the activities in which children observe or manipulate real objects or materials or they witness a teacher demonstration. Let me explain in detail. Where they are going to handling the real objects or materials, they learn better or the teacher or you as a teacher need to demonstrate it in detail with a small group of children. The more you demonstrate the activities and the experiments in a small group, the children grasp the concept or the activity much better. So, an old saying that I learn better when I do things and when I handle material with my own hands. Let's listen and see further. What do we mean by experiments? We are going to continue with this. Children learn to grasp the difficult concepts by handling and concrete material. Now what is concrete which we can manipulate with our hands, which we can see, touch, smell and taste and which we are going to enjoy with using our sense of touch and using our hands. Effective practical activities. Now what do we mean by effective practical? Effective practical is which is going to make the learning interesting, which is going to make the activities interesting and which is going to leave the impact better on the children. So effective practical activities enable our children 
to build a bridge between what they can see and handle hands-on experience. So what they can see and what they can handle, there is a bridging and the connections between the two. And scientific ideas that account for their observations. So the brains are on and they are active with their observation. So we need to make our children a keen observers so that they can explore, they can investigate, they can discover and they can experiment. And where they can uh, test the ideas when they are doing and acting out ideas with and creating and constructing ideas and they are learning better. Let's learn more. What are the what is the appropriateness or for learning of EVS? Well, uh, we all know that when we want to know the nature and the environment around us, it helps children learn to concepts better. When they are when the children are learning the concrete materials and playing with the concrete material, they are able to do the worksheets, which is abstract. We we as a teacher need to remember that worksheets are abstract. So concrete experiments and practical experiments help children to learn the abstract concepts and abstract worksheets and the difficult concepts much better. Well. Appropriateness is again, it helps to develop scientific temper in children which is very very necessary for the children at the primary stage which is going to help them to hypothesize and discover and explore. So in short we need to remember as a teacher how to develop the scientific temper in the children. We need to remember that we need to encourage children to explore, to observe, to discover to investigate, to explore and to experiment. The more we provide opportunities for these five kind of a things, the better the children learnings are and the sayings are, the more the children learn with hands and with the practical experience, it remains with them for the lifetime. And it enhances the skill of observation and analytical thinking in children. So let's learn further. What is more appropriate for the learning of EVS? It provides practical knowledge. We keep on saying why we are repeating these things that experiments and practical work is very good for hands-on experience to connect with the theory and to learn the abstract theory of environmental studies. It helps children to apply the theoretical knowledge when they actually are involved in doing and observing the experiments. Here you can see in the animated picture also that the child is stirring and the salt and the sugar and just learning whether the salt is soluble or not, whether the sugar is soluble or not. So it helps the children to learn the things faster and absolutely it gives a lot of fun and a lot of enjoyment to the children and makes the learning and the teaching learning in the classrooms interesting and motivating. So children look forward to come to the class regularly and attend the teachers lectures regularly. Now let's learn further. What, what are the different kinds of experiments we can do at the primary stage in the primary classroom? individual where you can provide and arrange and organize experiments for each and every child. What do we mean by small group experiments? Small group experiments where you have 8 to 10 or 5 to 6 number of children depending on the teacher people ratio and strength of your classroom. Then the most important thing and the most uh, effective thing is the pair system which we also call a buddy system because we also as teacher love to work with a partner. Similarly, children also love to work with a partner or with a buddy. And believe me, uh, children learn better with the buddy than the teacher. And as we say, and uh, that classroom experiments keep the young learners engaged because they get a hands-on experience. This is why we say that play is natural to the children, children learn by doing and play satisfy the curiosity of the children. Similarly, experiments are also like play. So experiments satisfy the curiosity and encourage the critical thinking in the children. Now let's see what we are going to learn further. 
Now let's see some examples of experiments in EVS classroom. One example is, which we you all must be knowing, is making an ORS solution. Now what this animated child is doing, trying to make some ORS solution. Now I hope all of you and all of my friends must be knowing how to make an ORS solution. If not, let's see. Let's making an ORS solution, you need a clean water. Clean water, for example, if we'll take one liter of clean water, one liter of five, uh, clean water means five cup full, each cup about 200 of ml. Sugar, six level teaspoons and all the teaspoons need to be equal in size. Level six level teaspoons, salt half level teaspoon and then you can see that the bowl is there and you can show such kind of a presentation to the children also so that the children know how to make an ORS solution. But the best is take a bowl, take the sugar and salt, take the clean water and do this experiment in front of the children. Encourage the children to stir the mixture till the sugar dissolves. Although the experiment is talking about ORS solution, but you know what the children are learning also? What is dissolvable and what is not? And how much time the salt takes to dissolve and how much time the sugar takes to dissolve. So such kind of a question you can ask in the reflection. Let's know more about small group experiments and other kind of experiments. So this, the Kendall experiment is very popular and you must have done in your school time also. So candle burning in the glass. So how are you going to do it? You're going to do it, you just tell the children that I'm going to light a candle and I'm going to put the glass on top of the candle. And before giving the answer to the children, encourage children to guess, to predict. Because guessing and predicting is the very important process skill of environmental studies. So many children will say, the candle will keep on burning. Many children will say, ye bud jayegi. So instead of giving a ready-made answer, you can ask the children, let's see what is going to happen. And within seconds, the candle you will see that the candle is not burning. And then you will pose the question, Oh, kya ho gaya? Candle kyo bujh gai? Why it happened? So let the children brain start active. Let the child brain do brainstorming. The children will start thinking. Critical thinking happens. Yes, if you are doing and this experiment during your topic air, children will definitely going to say, because the candle does not get air and that's why wo puch gai. So such kind of experiments but avoid giving ready-made answers to the children. Let the children think. When the children think it means that the child is thinking. Now let's see further. Linking connections of EVS experiments with art and craft. Take children outside. Take children outside. Let the children observe the nature. What is there in the nature? And then coming back, ask the children to do some craft and art activity. So connections, connections of EVS with language, connections of EVS with art. This kind of a craft activity helps children to understand how the trees look during each season. Some are dry, some are just blooming. And this activity children can do in a collage work, in a small group activity. What other we can share with you? Another experiment. Now this is a very important experiment which you must be read in your module, soil conservation. So objective of this activity is to help children to understand how roots of plants protect the top soil. What is the method? Now viewers, uh, just uh, look at this very carefully. Take two cardboards or the trays of 90 by 50 by 15 centimeter. Spread a plastic sheet to make them leak proof so that the water will not come out or the soil or the mud will not come out. At one end of each box or the tray, cut a V notch of 10 cm deep to draw the run of water into a glass jar. I am going to show a picture also and picture is also available in your module. Now let's see further. Fill each box with 3 to 4 cm layer of brick pieces pebbles 
followed by a layer of manured soil. Sow mustard seeds or any other seeds of your choice in one box. Leave the other box bare, nothing in it. And sprinkle water on box number one regularly. You can ask your children to sprinkle water regularly till the plants are little high. You can see that the plants are coming out or shooting out. Let's see further. Now set the boxes on a table towards the edge. Place a brick under the other end to give them a slope so that the water can go down. Place empty jars on stools beneath the notch. Now gently pour equal amount of water over the boxes. Now let's see what is going to happen. Now see, this I am going to explain. Box number one, you can see the vegetated pot and box number two, it's a bare box. So when you pour the water and ask the children to do so, when you pour the water in box number two, which is not vegetated, the muddier water is coming out in the jar. Whereas the vegetated box, you can see that the much cleaner water is coming into the jar. So when the children are doing it themselves, they can do what do, what do they mean by soil conservation. Now let's go in detail. Check the rate of flow and collect the water that flows from the boxes in the glass jars. Ask the children to do so. So there is a mathematics involved as well. Note the difference in the quantity and the quality of water collected in the two jars. So EVS is connected with the language, EVS is connected with maths, EVS is connected with arts and craft. Now let's see more what we are going to learn from experiments. Conclusion of this experiment. I'm talking about this experiment. So now can you see, ask the children and tell why the amount of water flows from the vegetated box is less than that of the bare box and why the water from the bare box is more muddier. And you believe me, children are going to tell you the answer. Because vegetation helps percolation of water through soil to collect as water table and also protects top soil. So simple. Experiment makes the learning so easy. Challenges. We are going to face some challenges while doing the experiments. Yes. Sometimes it is not possible in the classroom with a high teacher-people ratio. But yes, where there is a will, there is a way. You may not be able to have experiment for each and every child. But yes, you can plan it for small group of children. Most of the experiments at primary stage can be done at school and at home. But some experiments may require specific equipment and laboratory facilities. Encourage children to do simple experiments with adult supervision at home as well so that they can come in practice. Now let's see more further what are the role of the teachers and how we can make the experiments interesting. And there are still more challenges. Some experiments may require constant adult supervision and guidance. And remember, whenever you are doing the experiment, it is the teacher's responsibility to do the safety procedure and to see, to, all, to see all the safety procedure and the measures. So you need to be very, very careful. Experiments may require certain important procedures to be followed. For example, uh, fire, like never allow the children to light the candle or handle the match sticks alone. You need to be there always. Fundamental science process skills for children, these are the must and which every teacher is going to tell you that process skills are very, very important, very, very important and the most important is observation, communication and compare. Encourage children to observe and then encourage children to communicate what they are learning and then Compare. So these are the things which we are going to keep in mind every time. Then after doing lots of experiments, encourage and plan some worksheets which are abstract for the children. But only after doing the experiments you will plan the worksheets. So this is an example of a worksheet after doing the concrete experiments. It will help you to know how much your children has understood. It will help you to assess. Activity sheet again, ask the children to do with the help of elders at home. 
discuss in which activity water used the most and in which water is used the least what can be done to reduce such wastage of water so it depends on you how and how many activity sheets you want to plan depending on the experiments let's see further now this is again a worksheet after doing the melting experiment with the children which will melt which will not it will give children uh, it will uh, encouragement and it will be very easy for you to assess where your children has reached for the summative as well as the formative assessment let's see more experiments now this is a very very interesting experiment and you also must have done in your school ask children to bring seeds from their homes jaise rajma seeds chana seeds and ask them to bring a small pots and uh, let them sow the seeds in the pots in the school and encourage them to write down the needs of the plants so it is a very interesting and this you can do it right from class 1 till class 5th let's see further this is again a sinking floating activity after doing a concrete experiment with real objects and materials you can plan a sinking and floating activity sheets to do the assessment also and you can attach them these sheets in the portfolio as well this is again now what are the wonderful uh, materials which you must have for the discovery area and for the science area in each classroom magnifying lens encourage children to look with lens at different leaves take children outside and encourage children to explore observe and experiment during gardening so it is learning by doing some more experiments ideas for experiment as i said create a discovery areas in the classroom and the basic materials you require magnifying lens a simple small basket seeds feathers lots of leaves and so many other things you need to think on your own simple investigation techniques make evs relevant to students daily lives now let's uh, go further this is a quick thing which we are going to say make encourage children to make an observation keep asking question how the children are learning and whether the children are learning and also to see how the children are learning and whether the children are engaged or not make a hypothesis i think so encourage children to guess to predict encourage children to conduct experiment with small little things available in the environment encourage children to draw conclusions ask them to reflect on their own practices oh yes i learned that and then ask the children to report your results so that's a wonderful and you can take out such kind of a you can draw such kind of a chart and post it and display it in your classroom let's learn more on the experiments there are simple tips for the teachers always do the preparations in advance collect materials tools equipment water for cleaning after experiment washing hands beforehand before actually conducting the experiment involve as many children as observers and take two three children during the experiments under your guidance but give chance to all the children don't make favorite children only involved some more tips always follow the safety procedure as we keep on saying you are responsible for your children safety give instructions before starting the experiment so that children will keep uh, will not keep on asking why this is happening why this is happening but you are supposed to answer all the why's and all the queries of the children and one thing very very important always have first aid box in the classroom while doing even the simple experiments in your classroom so when we are ready to conclude today's session on experiments i'm just simply asking you are you ready to plan simple but exciting and interesting experiments for your children yes i hope so you are all very very enthusiastic teachers but remember children enjoy active classroom environment rather than boring chalk and talk method smile and get ready and plan practical work thank you so much learners